Hello and welcome to the fourth in series of Future of Commodities, Synergizing Credit and Risk Management in Commodity Markets. While the commodity markets have been around for a long time, these markets miss participation of financial institutions. Lots of laws are pending to enable trading in mutual funds and banks to participate. Financial institutions are essential to commodity markets basics. It's a sign that industry is mobilizing to defend its ability to move raw materials. Let's discuss this with our very important panel today. Joining us on the show are Madan Sabnavis, who is Chief Economist, Care Ratings. SS Mundra is MD, Bank of Baroda. Ramesh Abhishek, who is Chairman, Forward Markets Commission. We also have with us Praveen Dongre. And also joining us is Mr. Vijay Kumar from NCTEX. Mr. Sabnavis, while the commodity markets have been around for such a long time, do you see the banks not being allowed to participate as a missing link in the evolution of the market? No, definitely, it's a missing link from two points of view. One, from the point of view of banks themselves, if you look at the creation of the NPAs, I think that's one of the major worries today. If you see the propensity of uh, priority sector lending to go bad, seems to be higher than that for uh, non-priority sector lending. So intuitively, it means that uh, on their own account, there's a good reason why banks should be trying to hedge their uh, price risk, which is carried by the farmers. And uh, what we have seen is that whenever there's been a crop failure, there's always a tendency for defaults to increase. Now, the crop failure could mean two things. One is, of course, there's, uh, the volume which is affected. The second is the price which is affected. And that's where I think the, the banks have a reason to try and hedge the price risk of the farmers on their own account, because that's where, uh, where the risk rise. The second is, of course, something in which I think the market has been talking of for a very long time about the role of the bank as an aggregator. I think that's what uh, uh, the bank can really do because the bank is actually in touch with the farmers both at the pre-harvest and the post-harvest stages. And uh, this is where I think the produce of the farmers can actually be pulled in by the banks and then you, you, you hedge the same through the central treasury. So I don't see any major issue in it. And I'm quite sure that lots of banks are enthusiastic about it. But then we have the Banking Regulation Act which needs to change. It doesn't allow them to do it. So definitely I think it's, it's a major missing link. Well, absolutely. Mr. Vijay Kumar, what's your sense on this? I mean, banks, of course, as an aggregator, as an intermediary, do play an important role. But going forward, do you see the regulations change and this market actually evolve? Yeah, uh, Manisha, I'd like to maybe take a step back to just uh, focus on the economic role uh, uh, when commodity exchanges were uh, introduced. Uh, there is uh, in the economy a lot of commodity risk that is being taken by a lot of enterprises and many of them are financed by banks. So while banks may view it as uh, industry, there is a, really a spectrum of industries out there. A lot of them uh, at the commodity end uh, where uh, raw materials constitute a significant uh, uh, proportion of uh, the value of their sales. And these are the sort of uh, companies or uh, sectors that are uh, strongly uh, affected adversely uh, by uh, uh, shifts in commodity prices. And they should be the ones who are utilizing these commodity exchanges to hedge their risk. Now, uh, uh, the point that Madan made about uh, NPAs, some of the NPAs are just coming about because uh, these firms are not hedging their risks. So they are basically taking pretty large speculative exposures on their balance sheets uh, rather than uh, hedging them. Now, whether it's up to the banks to either take those uh, exposures or, I mean, take those, allow those exposures or to put in place policies which say, okay, if we are going to lend to these type of industries, then we will also follow it up with requirements that you have to uh, hedge that working capital exposure on your books uh, by uh, using futures instruments. Mr. Mundra, how do you look at the participation of financial institutions like bank in commodity markets? I think uh, I would say is very, very important today. And to be very uh, frank with you, it should not be uh, rather looked as only an option. I would say there is an economic need for it. And there are several examples internationally. In fact, uh, there is a story of Rubo Bank in Tanzania or the Banca de Brazil in Brazil where the uh, banks have been participating in the commodity derivative market and uh, they have acted very strongly as the aggregators and which will come in the support of ultimately the clients of the bank. So I think now is the time, uh, uh, this is one segment where the bank's presence would really help to deepen the market, widen the market and bring it the maturity. 
Mr. Dongre, what is your sense about the Indian commodity derivatives and whether they are now an accepted tool for hedging by Indian corporates? Uh, with economic liberalization and globalization, uh, the Indian uh, commodity prices have got integrated with the world markets and are moving in tandem. But an unintended fallout of all this has been an uh, increase in volatility as Indian prices are now moving in tandem with international uh, prices. And the volatility, uh, volatility uh, be it due to supply and demand in the international markets or uh, related underlying forex exposures or geopolitical risks in either case create volatility and corporates have realized the importance of hedging. They are participating in the uh, futures markets for hedging and it is now a well accepted scientific tool to mitigate risk. Mr. Abhishek, what is your sense and growth about the financial institution's participation in the commodity markets? As you know, uh, these future markets have been operating in commodities uh, for last 10 years. And uh, the existing FCRA wasn't uh, designed for regulating or developing a huge futures market. So there are many restrictions as of now, not only in FCRA, but also in various other laws which govern the participation and investment by banks and financial institutions like insurance companies and FIIs, etc. As we move forward with better regulation of the market, I think financial institution, institutions will come in and definitely that will be a big help in ensuring that these markets are deep and liquid. Mr. Sapnavis, the other thing is really this uh, relative study that we have in US. While the banks are a major player when it comes to the derivatives market, they also have some holdings while, of course, with the government allowance in case of spot markets as well. How will that study really be relevant to the Indian concept? No, I, th I think in the Indian context, we should realize one thing that aid is a regulation part which does not allow banks to come into commodities. Because typically, if you look at the balance sheet of banks, I think very clearly the so-called sensitive sectors includes commodities. And as of now, I think banks have been uh, advised by the Reserve Bank of India to have less exposure to the, the three sensitive sectors, commodities, capital markets, and uh, real estate. So I think pr presently, I don't think the banks would be in a position to get too much into commodities and directly if we're talking of spot markets. It's more likely that the futures uh, route is something which would probably work out in course of time. Because I think there is concern of NPAs, the basic fact that agriculture is, is the major sector which, are being, which is being financed by banks. And also the fact that the RBI is talking a lot about inclusive lending. And I think the sooner the RBI actually gets its act in, uh, into place, it will be, it'll be relevant. Because if I remember right, I think 2005 or so, the RBI had a commentary which uh, recommended the same thing. But unfortunately, what's happened to the commodity market is that nothing really has moved on the regular front and I think that's what's something which has to change. Okay so the banks are the missing link in the commodity derivatives ecosystem and many policies need to be changed to enable a better participation and evolution. With that let's go for a short break and come back with our panelists. Welcome back. As much as banks, it is the active participation from Indian corporates in the commodity derivative markets that we will dwell upon now. Mr. Dongri, as per various studies in India and globally, the financial activity in commodity futures tends to move larger than the physical crop size. How would you rate that? Well, it is not surprising because uh, commodity from the time, be it a farm commodity from the time of farm or a metal, which is from the uh, stage of its ore, is, is, is goes through a supply chain. So you have aggregators, you have uh, accumulation activity, you have processing, you have manufacturing, you have storage, and uh, you know final product um, uh, being manufactured. So along the entire supply line, there is a certain element of risk which is held by each participant of the supply chain. And uh, they then in turn use the uh, mitigate their risk by hedging on the futures market. So you will see that uh, naturally when, they, when one crop moves six times, there will be uh, that many more uh, of hedging happening and then you will see the volumes go up. So this is one reason. The other reason is that a, a very different set of people who participate in the markets, they are arbitrageurs, they are day traders, they are scalpers. Uh, and and, and these, uh, these, this set of group, this group of people uh, contribute a lot to the liquidity and volume and it's extremely, uh, it is extremely important that this liquidity is available in the market because you have uh, price efficiency and price discovery which happens. 
So, Mr. Mundra, if you do a comparison between how the global banks participate in commodities and how they do add liquidity and credibility, not price discovery though, how do you see the Indian trade in the same light? Maybe in the commodity derivative market, that is where the participation of bank is very, very meaningful at this point of time. Rather, it is a requirement. Uh, I don't say that bank are not participating. What, what is the position that under the uh, extent regulations, bank are, banks are not allowed to participate? If banks are allowed to participate, it will be very important thing both for their own risk management and for their clients' risk management. So the commodity derivative segment is the segment where I feel strongly feel that the bank should be allowed to participate. Maybe large corporates can have their own capabilities, their own departments to carry out this kind of activities. But for the farmers and SMEs, I think banks can play a very important role. Mr. Vijay Kumar, how would you look at the bank's role in derivatives market? We of course have spoken about the spot markets here, but apart from giving credibility, apart from giving liquidity, do you think there could be any uh, way that they could play a role here in sense of price discovery and more importantly risk management? Yeah, I think uh, different industries are uh, sort of adopting futures at different rates. So, for example, if you look at the oil seeds and oil sector, it's uh, a bit more mature. There are a lot of participants who have been aware of and have been using uh, the futures market. Uh, but if you look at the sugar industry, for example, and that's a classic uh, case of uh, how not hedging is actually leading uh, to trouble, not only to the industry, but also to the farmers. So if you look at uh, the open interest on the uh, futures exchanges, it's only about 100,000 tons. So while that, that's uh, this, sometimes this uh, saying that uh, this is uh, speculative activity going on, but if you look at the uh, goods uh, or the sugar stocks held by the industry, it's close to 15 million tons. Uh, so a lot of that 15 million tons is basically capital of the banks, which is being, uh, which is sitting as stocks and uh, is uh, is uh, uh, is a flat price exposure. Mr. Abhishek, what would you say that has been the major primary function of the commodity derivative market still time? Has it been hedging or price discovery or do you think delivery and trading also have been important points? Actually, the futures market is meant for price discovery and uh, hedging. But to discover the price, we need to have a lot of participants trading on the platform so that there is enough liquidity and the volumes are enough to allow an efficient price discovery. Physical delivery is not the objective of futures market. However, physical delivery is required when we want to converge futures market with the physical market because there are often quality issues and because price pooling from the spot market is also uh, debatable. So that to ensure convergence at the time of expiry, we need physical delivery. As a, because the threat of delivery makes the two markets converge. Well, many corporates really have taken in the risk management practices. SEBI in the recent days also has made it mandatory for the companies to disclose their hedging practices as well. So while we are talking about regulations, Mr. Sabnavis, do you think the first few small steps have been taken and perhaps the banks could play a bigger role now in the markets? No, I think we need to be a bit more... Uh... Uh, definite about uh, the regulatory processes because I think everything is clear. There's really no objection to saying having the banks coming into into the commodity space. Uh, uh, banks getting into the spot markets, to my mind, may not be workable because I don't think that's their core competence. But definitely in terms of uh, hedging the risk, I think we'll have to work out ways. Uh, and the one is what Vijay was saying, that you get the companies to to, to, to undertake this kind of uh, cover. Otherwise, the banks do it on their own. Because ultimately, if you look at uh, the, the entire in the corporate sector, we're having three kinds of risk. We're having the private exchange rate and interest rate and I think nobody's really cognizant of the fact that there are hedging opportunities which are available. Mr. Abhishek, even as we talk about growth and inclusion of uh, financial institutions, FIs into the commodity markets, there have been some learnings as well. We still have to correct our warehousing, essaying, lab testing, all of these issues. How would you look at integrating both of these? I think warehousing is a very important part of uh, commodity markets as we know. And since the future markets in commodities also are anchored in the physical market, the threat of delivery also requires that there is a strong, vibrant warehousing system. We have tried, uh, we have been trying since last uh, seven, eight months to ensure that the warehouses are created by commodity exchanges get registered with WDRA so that they adhere to certain minimum quality standards. 
we are still working on that we are also working on developing a warehousing manual there is a committee of exchanges and the commission which is working on that so we will definitely do uh, whatever it takes to develop a strong warehousing system which also includes a strong assaying system so that the public confidence in this market is uh, actually goes up Mr Vijay Kumar do you think a coordinated approach from point policy uh, in view that SEBI RBI FMC perhaps should sit together because this is something that involves all the other industries and companies too Yeah absolutely I think uh, on especially with respect to uh, banks participating I don't think there's a regulatory change uh, required in terms of the law uh, it's just that the RBI uh, maybe didn't want uh, proprietary trading to be uh, done of commodities uh, uh, by banks uh, and banks can certainly apart from lending uh, provide this as an additional service which both protects the bank and actually enables the uh, unit to, uh, to to be profitable uh, one of the things that we've uh, realized is that uh, agri food value chains need to uh, focus on value chains and derive their profit from where they add value not uh, uh, try to make money on uh, stocks on the price of stocks running up or face a lot of losses on the price of stocks uh, uh, going down for for no uh, reason that no controllable reason Mr Mundra do you think that could be the solution to make risk management integral to the commodity business and i mean to say liquidity rather i would say commercial bank provide more liquidity in the market being a regular participant in the market and also working on the both side of uh, balance sheet uh, you know liability as well as asset side from a much larger segment of the uh, economy so you want to add to it mr sapna no, in fact i think we have an anomaly in the system because uh, we are asking banks to lend more to for, for agriculture priority sector lending mm -hmm. on the other hand we are saying that we are having lots of these loans go bad the government is willing to go in for interest rate subvention you're willing to have waivers through the budget you're able to finance it but at the same time you're not allowing the banks to play the role which i think they very they very, they would be very much willing to do so so it's the coordinated approach by regulators and policy makers that we look forward to with that let's go for a short break and come back with more ideas Welcome back it is important to synergize the credit and risk management in commodity markets let's talk more about that with our panelists Mr Mundra what is the major role you see the banks playing in commodity markets both no, you, primary you, as you, well as secondary uh, is is uh, certainly uh, it will be uh, not only a desirable element it would be a necessary ingredient because there are quite a few areas of market which uh, touches the uh, different part of regulation and in such cases uh, the coordinated effort by the regulator would certainly bring a very robust regulation as i did mention that commodity uh, is a segment which touches the uh, small farmers it touches the uh, medium and small industries it is an important portion of the uh, large industrial corporates and uh, so the the uh, you know the sebi that is where uh, those elements are coming and when the banks are credit provider to these entities and banks are also in the commodity derivative market and provide the hedging solution so i think uh, with the coordinated efforts of all the regulator would be very important in this direction Mr Vijay Kumar this one is back to you then we keep talking about uh, time and again that if you bring in banks if you bring in other financial institutions would take these markets much higher Yeah absolutely I think banks for example if uh, when banks lend to these industries they do uh, uh, have teams uh, or collateral managers actually check whether against their working capital loans whether the uh, unit has the physical stocks and they also check whether these stocks are in warehouses and whether those warehouses are in uh, are insured Uh, but what they miss i think or what they're missing is that uh, on checking whether these uh, stocks have uh, price insurance against them but even uh, equity uh, uh, investors private equity investors lose a lot of money in industries where uh, hedging practices have not been adopted as a policy and uh, and ingrained into the management of those enterprises mr dongre while on one hand the recent regulatory moves are pro hedgers we still are at the tip of iceberg in terms of opportunity what according to you needs to be done to improve that yes i agree with you the oi as compared to global standards is dismal and uh, there are a lot needs to be done but i think that happens 
that is happening primarily because of the lack of domain uh, that our players have. I think there is a certain amount of fear to participate in the futures markets and at this time one needs to educate, uh, create industry specific, product specific contracts, make sure that there is sufficient breadth in the contract and educate the CEOs and CFOs of these corporates to understand the advantage of this fantastic tool that is available for, for them to hedge their price risk and I think once the, the knowledge and domain spreads, uh, spreads around I think we will have more and more uh, uh, participants in this market. And of course there are various other costs if the hedging costs are reduced you will see scalpers and day traders uh, involving themselves in the market. For example it's not so in the case of agricultural products but in the case of metals and other products we have the CTT which is the commodity transaction tax which has, uh, which has been introduced and this has reduced uh, the volumes drastically in, 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 in the case of metal because it drives away day traders and, 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 and scalpers out of the market. So with that, gentlemen, let's take your concluding statements as well. Mr. Vijay Kumar, how would you want to end it? What road forward do you see? I think I uh, view it from an economic point of uh, uh, view that this is the right time for uh, industry uh, and banks to, to get together and uh, set the foundation for what uh, hopefully is a good decade ahead of us uh, compared to the past one. And uh, such uh, strong uh, risk management uh, policies should be mandated. We should see more balance sheets uh, proudly presenting their hedging policies and uh, disclosing the level of uh, exposures and the hedges. I think that really sets the tone for uh, building businesses on a strong foundation. Fair point that. Mr. Subnamis, we are in a world right now which is rapidly changing. We are seeing a new crop of investors coming in, new type of investors coming into the markets as well. With the kind of growth that we are seeing, how would you see or how would you want to see the Indian scenario change? I think as we reach a stage of maturity, I think people need to be encouraged to use commodities as a tool for investment. So currently we look at uh, gold is acceptable, silver is acceptable, crude oil where India doesn't set the price is acceptable. But, but the moment you get into a commodity where there is uh, where India sets the price, there's a lot of uh, drawback on that. We, do, we, do, we really don't uh, are not quite sure whether we should go ahead with it. I think this is where I think we should have positive signals sent by the government where we actually encourage people to do it, diversify the investment portfolio, and I think that will uh, go along with in uh, growing this market. Mr. Dongre, would you say that the type of financial investors and the strategies they employ have undergone a huge change now? Well, trading strategies uh, constantly change, uh, but there is nothing serious about it. The, the fundamentals remain the same. Uh, I would say that with the advent of technology, tech-savvy investors have replaced uh, your day traders and traditional jobbers, and, uh, and, 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 and trading tools uh, are available uh, more easily than they were in the past. Uh, of course, in India, unfortunately, we do not have any options trading and that could be bringing a big change in the futures markets once options uh, are allowed to be traded. Mr. Mundra, now SEBI has made it compulsory for companies to disclose their hedging exposure. So would you say that a beginning has been made in that sense? Uh, if, it is, if it becomes a market uh, which is not having a wider participation, and if the participation is limited to few players, then this kind of situation comes. But as the market widens and there are more players, then I think then both the things happen efficiently. Liquidity is available and the price dis discovery also becomes efficient. So I think that is another perspective where the presence of uh, banks uh, should serve that purpose very adequately. Mr. Abhishek, as has been the course of discussion as, and as many panelists agree that we have a better derivative market standardization than what we have in sense of the spot markets, how do you look at aligning both of these as we go ahead? This has been an issue uh, right from the beginning uh, since 2003 that uh, future markets are very highly developed, sophisticated platforms and whereas the physical markets in commodities continue to be fragmented there are too many restrictions on movement of goods within the state and between states. There are issues on price discovery, transparency is not there, warehousing is a problem, credit linkages are a problem. So all these actually lead to a very rather fragmented and opaque physical market. So uh, future market being an adjunct of the physical market, it is necessary that uh, physical markets are also functioning properly because future markets cannot do away or ignore the various issues and problems that are associated with physical markets. 
All right, so we need the banks, corporates, financial institutions to be part of the commodity markets and we need all the regulators to come together as well to make those important policy changes. But with that, thank you so much, gentlemen, for taking time out and thank you so much for watching. Keep watching ET Now.